On today's ChurchTechHouse.com screencast show, five reasons to upgrade to ProPresenter 6. Hi, and welcome again to the ChurchTechCast.com screencast show. This is the show where every week I help you with the software that we use in the church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. I'm your host, and I'd love for you to leave your questions or comments, so just do that below the video. Now, you may not know that this show is available as a video podcast, so if you're interested in having those videos delivered automatically for free to your device, then by all means, go to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash subscribe and subscribe there. So sometimes it's easy to think, well, I can't justify the expense of upgrading to a later version of software. I know personally I, I used uh, one version of Photoshop for years and years and years, and I just didn't upgrade. And then I finally bit the bullet and went with Creative Cloud, and I'm glad I did. So you might be in a similar situation where you have ProPresenter 5 and you're not sure if you should pay for the upgrade. So let's head over to my computer and I want to show you five reasons why, if I were you, I would upgrade. So let's head over and take a look. So with ProPresenter 6, Renewed Vision has added all kinds of cool new features and maybe you're on ProPresenter 5, maybe you're on an earlier version, and you just don't know, well, is it worth the, the money to upgrade? Well, I have at least my favorite five features. I did ask in the uh, ProPresenter users group that I created over on Facebook, and one of the uh, people went ahead and mentioned one of these two as well. So we'll get going and we'll touch on each of these in turn. So the first thing is this button right here, the scheduler. Now what the scheduler enables you to do is start certain elements at certain times. During the middle of service, this isn't going to be all that useful. But at the beginning of service, it very well might be. It's nice, for example, to know that if you're away from the computer doing something, troubleshooting something, what have you, at 10 minutes before service is supposed to start, the pre-service loop starts whether you're there or not. It's also really nice to know that when the countdown gets to zero, the first song will start. So that's another nice little feature of what you can do in the scheduler. It's uh, pretty simple. You just hit the plus button. You select the playlist. Right now I'm on the graphics playlist, so I'm going to select that. Then uh, I select one of the things. Let's say that we wanted to start with and can it be exactly at 1 a.m. You can tell I record this late. Um, and that's really all there is to it. Um, I can change this if I decided to. I can have that repeat daily or weekly. Um, it really doesn't matter, but uh, keep in mind that these are per playlist. So if you were to repeat a, an event daily or weekly and you needed to change the playlist, that would affect this. So something for you to keep in mind. But the scheduler is one of the big things that a lot of people have asked, and it's uh, really very helpful. The next Thing that I really like is element transitions. So in the past you could fake some of this, but really it wasn't all that good. So if we look here, these are examples that uh, Brad from Church Media Design TV created. And basically instead of just having one static slide, you can have multiple elements that go in and go out. So that can really provide a whole lot of um, different abilities. It, it really 
kind of draws the eye. So these are particularly great for either perform songs, you know, special music, that kind of thing, or for uh, what we're doing here, which is a pre-service announcement loop or a post-service announcement loop. And that just wasn't able to be done. You could kind of fake it in Pro 5, but this is really the best way to do it. So the element transition is another great thing that they added. Next, if your pastor likes to put up, say, maps of the Holy Land or anything like that, you might have a problem where uh, you have to use like a laser pointer to illustrate things on screen. Well, not any longer. Now you can use the Telestrator feature and this is uh, available in the remote app as well. So you can draw on each one. You can draw a circle around things. You can highlight certain things or back to the old laser pointer. And I chose blue, but that could be red, green, any color you want it to be. And I can change that quickly and easily over here. Now it's red. Okay, so that's the Telestrator, which is my number three reason that you would want to upgrade ProPresenter to ProPresenter 6. Number two, this one is particularly cool. Let's say that someone in another part of the building needs to get a message up on screen. Well, you don't want them to put it up directly. You you'd make sure that you want to put it up at the right time, but it would be great if instead of texting you or giving you a call or handing a note to you, it could just pop up like right here. Wouldn't that be great if well now we can do that. So there is a little web server built into ProPresenter 6 and as long as people are on the same network and there's no subnet problems or things like that, you can go to a website here. Let me drag over what it looks like, like that. You can go to a website and you can uh, type in a message. This one will say test and I click that and it shows up over here and now I can just click test and it shows up. Now in going into messages right here I can absolutely format that with the template so that it's not just this little bitty thing right there but it's really nice that it could say you know type in the child's number for your children's ministry and it would show up there. So that's another really cool feature. But to tell you the truth, none of those are uh, my favorite feature here. Let me clear all just so that we don't uh, have to deal with too much of this. And so what is really cool, and I've set this up a little bit, is stage display. Now, not everyone uses the stage display. I, I get that, but really you have a lot more power. So the first thing that is really cool in the new version of ProPresenter is while I have a version of the uh, stage display just off to the left, over here where you can't see it, next monitor over. Um, maybe your church doesn't. So wouldn't it be great if you could preview what the stage display is showing? Well, actually you can. So let me click on that so that we have something. You'll see that, um, actually let me do it like this. So we'll do it like that, okay. So now you can see that the background is moving and you can preview the stage display by clicking up here or doing Command-3 on a Mac. It's probably Control-3 on a PC, but I'm doing this on Mac, so that's what it is. So now you see what this is. But wouldn't it be great if you could actually put what's on the main screen on the stage display? Well, actually you can. And these are the next two things. Now I did not toggle back and forth. Uh, let me 
do that right now. So I will go back and now we're on the regular display here to show what that is. Okay, so this is regular. Command 3 is stage display. Uh, if I go down here, it's stage display. But I've done two things on this slide. First off, I changed the arrangement of the stage display so that it shows what's on the main screen. And I put in a cue to change that automatically. So this changes to showing what's on the main screen on the stage display. This also has a cue changing back to what the stage display looks like normally. So I can change the stage display with these cues automatically and I can show what's on the main screen. I can show um, you know, uh, a different arrangement if I'd like, and I could change that on a per slide basis if I wanted to. Don't know why you would change it every slide, but maybe, maybe you would need to. Maybe you're doing a complex element that's uh, basically a background with lyrics, and then in the middle you go to a video. Well, you can change over on, let's say, this one, to the video so that the people on uh, stage can actually see what that is and then you could go back when the video was done or at a lull or whatever to lyrics. So that is another great thing is the cue which you add just by right clicking and um, going to add cue and stage display layout and you'll see that I have four layouts here and I can right now it's set to the default layout which basically replicates what's on the main screen. I've got a music layout which is uh, this guy so this is the cue that I put there. Then I've got one for kinetic typography. I've got another tutorial showing how I kind of cheated that to make that work. So um, basically you've got four options right here and I could have more, I could have less, doesn't matter, but just being able to change that automatically without having to search through menus is really great. Now those are my favorite reasons for you to upgrade. There are others. The uh, ProPresenter remote is improved uh, the social media tab isn't just Twitter, it's also Instagram now, so that's nice. The uh, Bibles have been rebuilt from the ground up. There's just a lot of great reasons to update to ProPresenter 5 if you're on, or ProPresenter 6, if you're on ProPresenter 5 or earlier. So uh, I thought that I would mention those five reasons and see what you think about them and if you've already upgraded feel free to below the video just tell me what reason prompted you to upgrade whether you thought well it's time we were on ProPresenter 3 we were on ProPresenter 4 which was I'm glad they went to ProPresenter 5 not long after that um, you know whatever whatever your reason put it in the video below and we'll discuss it uh, there. Well, I hope that helped you. I hope that now you've got uh, some good reasons to go ahead and upgrade to ProPresenter 6. Now, I'm not an affiliate for them or anything like that. I just think that there's some really good features that were really well thought out, and I'm glad that they put them in there. If you like this content, uh, you'd probably like my email newsletter. So head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts, G-I-F-T-S. Pick up a free church tech tool of your choice. I've got five or six there. And you'll also get a free subscription to my email newsletter. Also, just while we're at it, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this far into the video. I know sometimes you dip in, dip out, just get a little uh, tip, trick, what have you, and it means a lot to me that you're watching. You know, speaking of things, uh, 
I think of you all the time, and I'm always trying to figure out what I can make to make your life easier as a church techie, because I've been there. I've been doing this since 2000, so it's uh, something that I've struggled with over the years, and just every time I pick up something new, I think, man, other church techies need to know this, so that's why I create resources like the ones that you'll find over at my store, trinitydigitalmedia.com slash store. By the way, while you're there, take a look at Church Tech U, which is a, a monthly or yearly subscription to a community where all my resources are available for one low price, and you also get a community of people that you can ask questions of, that's where I hang out, etc., and we can help each other. So take a look over there at that. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com. Go out and change eternity. Thank you.